So this is a quick uh, explanation of what's called price controls, and price controls are the third type of government intervention that we've looked at in this course. And this is a nice little example, and this is an example from Europe of, and the article from The Economist is talking about, in times of austerity, which means times of um, you know, governments trying to s stop their spending, Europe spends far too much subsidising rich farmers, and the cartoon's quite nice, the European politician being held ransom by the European farmer. And some of the statistics are quite interesting, and I'll just show you down the bottom, is that you know, the EU is famous for spending money on its farmers, and you look down here, it talks about how they still spend, I mean, the EU budget is not as big as countries' budgets, but the EU spends roughly 40% of its budget on agriculture in an industry that generates less than 2% of its GDP and employs less than 5% of its workforce. So that's, I mean, that's an interesting statistic that talks about how I mean, the EU does need to think about the policies that they do. And they subsidise farmers because of something called price controls. And so that's what we're going to talk about um, in this little tutorial. So price controls... are a situation where... So price controls are a situation where the government decides to provide, to set a price that is above the equilibrium. We call this price control here, a price um, a minimum, or sometimes call it a price floor, where prices cannot, um, prices cannot drop below this level. So if the price is set at this level, you get something called a disequilibrium. And at this disequilibrium, you get this phenomena here where we have the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied. And whenever these two things don't equal each other, we, we call this um, a disequilibrium. And in this case, if at, say, this market price, which we can say is at PM, um, at this market price, the quantity that's demanded is less than the quantities that's supplied. So you have to think in your head, is it to do with a surplus or is it a shortage? And in this case, it is a surplus of products, more being sold than there is being demanded. And, I mean, the impact of this is that the prices have gone up. Um, we have this, this disequilibrium in the market. But the government has to intervene, and that's one of the impacts of, um, of what we call as price controls. Uh, and we can think of our different stakeholders in this. We can think of, well, we have our farmers as one important stakeholder group. And what happens to them when this happens? Well, the price that they pay has obviously gone up. The price that they receive has gone up. And also, the quantity that's sold has also gone up. So their revenue has also increased significantly. Um, the other important group is our consumers. Um, well, consumers have, their quantity demanded has fallen at the new price, um, because the minimum price uh, is greater than the equilibrium price. Um, and this means that there'll be a, there's a significant fall in what we call consumer surplus for these consumers. The, perhaps we talk about the first group. Third group, we talk about the EU, EU government. Well, they're interesting. What they have to do in the market is because they have intervened, they must, they have to purchase the excess quantity from the farmers. So they end up purchasing the difference between this quantity demanded and the quantity supplied. Yeah. And so there's a cost of that. There's the price they have to pay in the market times the amount of the surplus. And sometimes they purchase this and then sell it abroad. They sell it overseas as an export to other countries to kind of recoup the money. But it's... Um, there's things like storage costs involved in buying a surplus of products. Sometimes agricultural products can't be stored. 
and regardless, we say there's a really significant um, opportunity cost for governments. And this thing here is the biggest example of what we call a um, inefficiency. And we say that this market is allocatively inefficient. The efficient point is in the middle, when supply equals demand. And because of what the government's done, we're left with this inefficient point, which is way up here. Um, it is neither what consumers desire um, at the same point. Final, there's one kind of other stakeholder which is quite interesting. If you think about what happens when this surplus here is sold. So we're selling the surplus overseas. Um, and we talk about this how it's dumped on other countries. And well, if it's if this product is dumped in other uh, developing nations, if, if they are pushing to buy it, well, it's like farmers in one country are gaining by selling a cheaper product in another country. So local farmers in these other countries um, are being harmed because they are less price competitive. Um, they will reduce their quantity supply, resulting even a and a global misallocation of resources. I mean, so overall, this is an example of what we just call minimum price. Minimum price controls, and our EU farmers was our little case study. You can see for several reasons that it's highly inefficient, and this is the big, I guess the big phrase in this little tutorial is that some of the is allocatively efficient. Um, the market's not producing at a point where supply equals demand. And we have farmers that are benefiting, consumers that are hurting, and government which has to pay for this kind of stuff. And this links back to the article we talked about before and how the EU spends up to 40% of their income on subsidising farmers.